Well, first, let me uh, begin by thanking you for the opportunity to speak here tonight, it's stuff that uh, I'm deeply excited and passionate about. So the title of my talk is called, the, and can you, can you folks hear me? Great. Uh, it's called Decoding the Brain. And really what I hope to convince you about in the next uh, 20, 30 minutes is that uh, the brain is not a black box. It's, the brain is something that we can know and understand. And, uh, and that I think we're at a very exciting time right now where we're just starting to learn some of these principles. So to begin with, first just to, about what I'm going to be talking about. First I'm going to give you a brief historical overview of how we've come to understand brain function. Some of the dynamic analysis and applications of some of the recent things that have gone on, some of their implications, and some of the future directions. So really, when you look at it 200 years ago, the first ways we began to understand brain function incorrectly was through phrenology, basically ascribing function to different bumps on the head. And, uh, but we re it, I think uh, it really started to take on some level of seriousness uh, in the mid-19th century, where basically with lesions in the brain, uh, we started to learn about how different parts of the brain work by its dysfunction. And kind of a classic example is Phineas Gage. He was a, a railway, railway worker who basically was a very God-fearing, very serious uh, man who basically got a railway spike through his brain, which you kind of see right here. And it was kind of very newsworthy back then. And he went and it basically injure, injured the uh, frontal lobes of his brain. And after that, he became a very disinhibited gentleman where he would cuss all the time, he would kind of, you know, kind of go to the bathroom on the streets, and really people at that point suddenly realized, well, the frontal lobes are important for personality and inhibition. And that was kind of one of the first forays in kind of essentially the study of lesions of the brain. And really that went on for really the next 150 years, and even to somewhat today, where we, start to, where we still learn about how the brain works by certain areas of dysfunction. So, and kind of concurrent with that, really at the, the turn of the century, we learned that not only the, that the brain is an electrical organ, that it generates electrical activity. And this gentleman, Hans Berger, out of Germany, was the first guy to discover EEG. And even at that time, he thought that, well, maybe that these oscillating brain waves can tell us something about how the brain works and even understanding thoughts. But it really wasn't until uh, really kind of the 80s where we started to look at some epiphenomena associated with brain activity, which told us, told us about where function was occurring. And it was usually with uh, kind of such things as alterations in blood flow, blood oxygenation, or metabolism. Uh, and we used those changes to identify what certain areas of brain function, where they were located. And again, they gave us kind of some rough pictures of uh, where activity in the brain was going on with certain cognitive functions. And just to give you a brief kind of summary of those, um, for instance, we learned that the back part of the brain, the occipital lobes, are uh, involved with uh, visual processing. Again, a lot of these things we learned through lesional studies, but this is really the first time that we were start essentially seeing the brain in action. The frontal lobes, let's see if I, coming up here, yeah. Uh, again, involved in executive function, you know, higher level decision making. Uh, inhibition, as we learned with Phineas Gage 150 years prior. Our temporal lobes, kind of the bottom part of our brains, and our, our, the middle part of those temporal lobes involved with uh, memory. The back part of our frontal lobes involved with motor function. And two areas uh, known as uh, Wernicke's area and Broca's area, again, which we initially learned by lesioning, uh, involved in uh, the production and the understanding of speech. 